This is VOA News. I'm Scott Walterman. North Korea on Friday announced it had built a tactical nuclear attack submarine as part of its effort to strengthen its naval force, according to the state news agency. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un presided over the unveiling ceremony on Wednesday, saying the new sub was part of a push forward with the nuclear weaponization of the Navy in the future. Foreign ministers from Nordic and Baltic countries gathered in the Latvian capital Thursday to discuss cooperation and support for Ukraine. More from VOA's Jeff Custer. Foreign ministers from Sweden, Norway, Finland, Latvia, and Lithuania took part in the gathering. At a news conference following their meeting, they said Ukraine's eventual membership in NATO was discussed, while each nation said they've pledged more than a billion dollars in aid per year. Norway said it is among the nations donating F-16 advanced fighter jets to Ukraine, and Sweden's foreign minister, Tobias Bilstrom, said they've already started training Ukrainian pilots to fly their jets. Well, uh, I'm very pleased the training of uh, fighter pilots is now underway. Evaluation needs to be done, of course from both sides after the completed training. And Sweden is also part of the F-16 coalition in defense of Ukrainian airspace. Jeff Custer, VOA News. In London, a former soldier awaiting trial on terror charges appears to have escaped from prison by strapping himself to the underside of a food delivery truck. He remains at large and police are combing the UK looking for him. Here is the head of the Metropolitan Police Counter-Terrorism Unit, Dominic Murphy. There's 150 detectives and staff from Counterterrorism Command here in London, but many, many more from around the country and border force. The 21-year-old is accused of planting fake bombs at a military base and spying. This is VOA News. A federal judge in Boston has sentenced a wealthy Russian businessman with ties to the Kremlin to nine years in prison for his role in a nearly $100 million insider trading scheme. The scheme involved stealing earnings-related filings for hundreds of companies, including Microsoft and Tesla, by hacking into U.S. computer networks, then buying stocks based on the info. The Pentagon is pushing back against Russian criticism about uranium-based ammunition to Ukraine, More on this story from Associated Press Pentagon reporter Sagar Magani. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov calls the decision very bad news, claiming U.S. use of the depleted uranium ammunition elsewhere led to a big rise in cancers and other illnesses at the Pentagon. The CDC has stated that there is no evidence that the uh, depleted uranium rounds, rounds cause cancer. Spokeswoman Sabrina Singh says militaries around the world use the extremely dense ammo, which the U.S. developed during the Cold War to destroy Soviet tanks. Penetrates the conventional armor better than regular munitions. But Austrian weapons expert Ilyana Sokova says the new rounds still won't be a game changer. To me, it's just another piece of metal in the arsenal. Sagar Magani, Washington. The International Monetary Fund and World Bank on Thursday issued a rare joint statement pledging to step up their cooperation to address climate change, debt vulnerabilities, and countries' digital transitions. Released ahead of the G20 summit, where U.S. President Joe Biden intends to focus heavily on reforming the World Bank and other multilateral development lenders to scale up their lending for climate and infrastructure. Biden is bringing an ambitious message to the G20. His offer for the Global South is this. Whatever happens to China's economy... The United States can help fund your development. More from Reuters, Jillian Kutchner. Biden is hoping to persuade fast-growing economies in Africa, Latin America, and Asia that there is an alternative to China's massive infrastructure plan called the Belt and Road Project, which has funneled billions of dollars to developing countries, but left many deeply in debt. Part of that pitch involves reforming the World Bank and boosting its funding under President Ajay Banga for infrastructure in the developing world. Washington thinks a rebooted World Bank could meet the Global South's needs and serve its own interests. Reuters reporter Jillian Kitchener. I'm Scott Walterman, VOA News.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.